let's go back to the tree and the fruit let's go back to the parable of the lord jesus christ when he was talking about the false prophets so this is the part two of the parable of the false prophets or the fruit of the false prophet or the uh, good tree and the bad tree amen so we're going to continue this teaching the second part of it let's go with let's go to matthew chapter 24 verse 11 through 14 many false prophets will arise and will mislead many and we already went through this but i want to highlight something because the rest of the teaching is is going to follow that so mislead many right because of because lawlessness will increase most people's love will grow cold meaning because of the lawlessness the love of many will grow cold so what is love and what is lawlessness the lord jesus christ is talking about here john chapter 14 verse 15 lord jesus said if you love me keep my commandments keeping commandments being lawful not keeping the commandments is lawlessness if people are lawlessness that means they do not love the lord jesus christ they can worship they can flag they can dance uh, they can go to church and they can do whatever they want to do but if they do not keep the commandments of the lord jesus christ it equals they do not love the lord and that's pretty much it so because of the lawlessness because the, the there are apostles and teachers and prophets and pastors who are not teaching the commandment of the lord who are not teaching the real gospel the real gospel of jesus christ therefore there is a lot of lawlessness today there is a whole, whole lot of lawlessness today verse 13 but the one who endures to the end he will be saved meaning he is the one who will go to heaven who will make it to heaven the one who endures to the end will make it to heaven this is also this also goes along with the parable of virgins and the parable of the seed whoever endures till the end will be saved will make it to heaven what does that mean we will look at it now verse 14 lord jesus said this gospel you see the gospel that the lord jesus christ preached because the bible says lord jesus preached the gospel the apostle uh, the apostles the apostles preached the gospel lord jesus preached the gospel so lord jesus is saying this is my gospel and this is the gospel that of the kingdom that will be preached to the to the entire world and then the end will come so don't worry about all these uh, weird uh, prophecies that end is here and end is not here we go by the word we don't go by kooky prophets end is not here yet according to the lord jesus christ end is not here yet you see lord jesus said this gospel will be preached to the whole world and then the end will come and this is not the gospel that's being preached the perverted gospel is being preached in most cases so now we are coming in a season where the lord has heard the cries of his servants and now the lord is raising up people the apostles 
I am telling you, we're going into the season where the, the, the office of an apostle will become so prominent and the real ones, real ones will arise to whom the mystery of the gospel and the true word of God has been given and entrusted. And these people will not compromise no matter you. You give them $1 million, you give them $1 trillion, you give them whatever, gold and diamonds, they will not compromise. I am telling you, they will not compromise the word of God. This is the kind of apostles that the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ is raising up in this hour to preach this gospel. And when this gospel that you are learning, you are hearing goes all around the world, then the end will come. Until then, it is suffering and endurance. So don't listen to anybody. Don't listen to those false prophets. So please be careful. Be careful what you hear. Even the Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles, be careful what you hear. And that's what I'm telling you. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful what you hear. Matthew chapter 25 verse 8. And the foolish virgins said unto the wise, give us your oil meaning give us your teachings for our lambs are gone out they couldn't they fell asleep night came they fell asleep their oil went out they didn't know what to do in the tribulation they didn't know how to te endure the testings and trials until the lord returns right so they were like well teach us what you know and the wise ones were like why should we you enjoyed your your false teachers and false prophets now you go to the right ones you buy the oil we're not going to share with you because we ourselves want to make it all the way all the way end all the way all the way to the end so the these foolish uh, virgins they didn't have the right teachings to endure all the way through to keep the lamp burning, the, uh, the parable of the virgins, that they did not have teachings to help them go through all the way. Then um, the parable of the seed is, Lord Jesus said, the only one, the, the group, fourth group, is the only one that will make it to heaven. There's only one group that will make it to heaven, and that group is when they are the ones who have a good soil, they have a virtuous heart, and they really genuinely want to know the Word of God, and they want to practice and do the Word of God. They love the Lord, so they, when they receive the Word of God, they actually, it goes into their good soil of their heart, and they actually put it into practice. They hold fast to the word of God and they put it into practice and they believe they receive it by faith and then they go and then they stick to the word through all trials and testings they don't lose their faith so suppose you see 40 people who say I'm a Christian I'm a Christian in your church or wherever you go into a fellowship or whatever you meet 40 people and all 40 say i'm a christian guess what out of 40 only 10 actually will make it to heaven that's the average only 10 out of 40 will make it to heaven i didn't say it the lord said it and this is the gospel that will be preached to the world before the end comes. So people have a choice. They can make up their mind which way they want to go. Because right now people are not taught. Therefore, they don't know what to believe and what to do. 
Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2, For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as it was preached to them, but the, but the gospel that they heard did not benefit them. You see, the 30 people heard the gospel, same gospel. Or nowadays there's just a ton of perverted gospel. They're saying that the, the Apostle Paul is saying, well, I'm fully persuaded that it is the Apostle Paul and Apollos who wrote this. So here's the Apostle Paul saying that the gospel was t preached to us as well as it was preached to others also, but the message did not benefit them. You see, gospel does not benefit everybody. What I'm giving you through grow in wisdom, I'm literally giving you the gospel. Grow in wisdom series is literally about the gospel because all I'm giving you is the parables of the Lord Jesus Christ, the way he preached the gospel. This is the gospel he preached. However, the apostle Paul is saying it did not benefit them because they did not mix it with faith and did not come along those who obeyed the gospel. If you love me, obey me. If you love me, keep my commandments. So gospel will not benefit anybody. Benefit those it would didn't will not benefit those 30 people because they will not receive it by faith, mix it with faith and 100% hold on, hold on to it and obey it. You see, that's why those 30 people will not make it to heaven. Now, let's go to the next point. Next point is, how do we test the fruit? How do we test the bad fruit or how do we test the false prophets? What are the signs of the false prophets? Because if we don't have the signs, how do we recognize what we are listening to and who we are listening to? 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. So when the Apostle Paul is saying, don't believe every spirit, meaning those spirits, we talked about it, the spirits that are teaching these teachers, whether it be the Holy Ghost or it be the, the seducing spirits. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So he, if he's saying, test every spirit, so... If somebody is telling you, test every spirit, that means they have also given some signs or some, some way of testing. Because if the Apostle John is saying, test every spirit, that means there are measures in the Bible by which we test. It is so simple. So let's go to how we test and what we look for. So how do you test? Number one, by the word of God alone. If anything Lord Jesus Christ did not teach, did not preach, whether it's inner healing or that demonic deliverance system, man-made deliverance system where they lead you through generational curses and generational sins and all that. It's a Satan's workshop. Or um, anything like um, a courts of heaven and whatever. Just remember simple thing. Very simple thing. Don't believe anything that the Lord Jesus Christ did not teach. You see, Lord Jesus Christ could have preached a better uh, message or given a better description of heaven and the angels. 
because he was God. And he could see heaven and angels far better than these so-called teachers and prophets and whoever these are today who talk about their heaven's visitations and angelic visitations and this and that. Lord Jesus Christ never taught about it. Never ever taught about it. So anybody who teaches on these like angels and this and that, you know, if, if that was important, Lord Jesus Christ would have taught about it. He taught obedience. He taught love. He gave commandments and just stick to that and you will make it all the way. He never anointed anybody's eyes to see angels. He never taught anybody to see demons. He did not teach his apostles how to see in the spirit. He did not. So do not, please, make a rule. Make a rule. I will not listen to anything or believe in anything that the Lord Jesus Christ did not teach and did not preach and did not practice. And you will 100% make it all the way through. And if you have any books, if you have any books on Judaism, if you have any books on angels, if you have any books of any such thing, I will say get rid of them. Absolutely get rid of them. You see, when I saw the things that I saw, nobody laid hands on me. Nobody anointed me. Nobody taught me. Because I needed certain things, the Lord gave me those things. Doesn't mean that I should teach on those things and, and anoint everybody and impart to everybody to see the same, see the angels and encounters and all. No! They're not meant for everybody. That's what we saw in the Bible. Not every apostle walked on water. Not everybody saw angels. N no. It's God's sovereignty. So please throw those books away. Throw those whatever CDs or whatever you have. Get rid of them. Only the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God said to Peter, James, and John, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Number two, by believing the gospel, Lord Jesus Christ preached and his apostles preached. Stick to the pure gospel and you will make it all the way through. If you have any teachings on perverted gospel, perverted gospel doesn't mean that it's, it, it has some sexuality to it, sensuality to it. Well, sensuality meaning it's pleasing to the soul. It tickles ears that, oh, God loves you and hyper grace and there are no commandments that you have to keep or whatever that Jesus Christ, you know, fulfilled the law so we don't have to do anything. So anything that does not align, any gospel that does not align with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of the apostles, do not believe it. This is how you test the spirit. Who is teaching what? Because people who don't have the real gospel, they will listen to anything. By only believing the word and not listening to people's experiences and wanting to have people's experiences. Don't fall into that trap. Nowadays, people are chasing each other's experiences. 
I want that experience. Oh, you had this experience. I'll have this experience too. Uh, because God is not a respecter of a person. Really? Uh, the Apostle Paul wasn't trying to say God is not a respecter of a person. He'll give you whatever he gives to another. In fact, this scripture is quoted so wrongly, incorrectly, that it's not even like it's just terrible. It is terrible. The Apostle Paul was telling the Jews that God will punish Jews and Gentiles equally. And God will, if, if Jews are obedient and Gentiles are obedient, God will bless the Jews and the Gentiles. In that term, the Apostle Paul was saying, God is not a respecter of a person. Whoever obeys him, God will bless them. Whoever disobeys him, God will punish because God is not a respecter of a person. In this regard, the Apostle Paul gave that scripture, but this scripture is used by false prophets, false teachers for coveting things. Oh, you can have this too, and you can have this too. So be careful. Don't go by experiences. Everybody is meant for different experiences. You are meant for different experiences. Don't covet other person's experience. Stick to yours and be happy with yours. Then the next point is by testing the doctrines, whether these doctrines are sound doctrines, according to, to the Apostle Paul, he says in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, that in the latter times, they will not endure sound doctrine, that they will not even tolerate the sound doctrine. Sound doctrine means that it is balanced, that there's balance, that, you know, it's absolutely true, it's filled with truth, that there's no deceit in it. Stick to the pure doctrines. And doctrine, how, what is the doctrine? Doctrine is when a matter is established by two or three scriptures. Not just by one scripture. No doctrine can be formed, no, no belief, no sound belief. Doctrine is simply set of beliefs. That's it. Based on someone's understanding of the scriptures, that's doctrine. Nothing fancy about it. But a real doctrine, true doctrine, is established on two to three scriptures that establish the same truth. Two to three witnesses. But there are people who take one scripture and they create a doctrine out of it. And this is where the mess comes in. This is where the doctrines of men and doctrines of demons come in. And the next point is by their fruit. By their fruit, meaning fruit equals character and their dealings. Let's look at Ju uh, Jude. Let's look at Jude chapter 7. Jude chapter 7, verse 7 through 13. Verse 7 through 13. Sorry. It's so Jude actually has only one chapter. Remember, Jude, the apostle Jude, has only one chapter. So it's, it's verse 7 through 13. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them is like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, 
meaning sexual immorality and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire likewise also these filthy dreamers so i'll show you other scriptures who these filthy dreamers are these are the false prophets and false teachers bible calls them the filthy dreamers so write down underline filthy dreamers equals false prophets false teachers these filthy dreamers defile the flesh despise dominion meaning they despise authorities and authority of the scripture so these people may be uh, they may be like really good at submitting to fellow pastors fellow authorities but they do not submit to the authority of the scriptures they do not submit to the authority of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's talking about. Because I have seen the false teachers and false prophets, they actually submit to each other and they get along really well with each other. Um, the uh, culture of honor, what garbage, what garbage is that? They despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. So, not only they they uh, don't submit to the right authorities but they also uh, speak evil of dignities now let me show you what the apostle jude is talking about here yet michael the archangel when contended with the devil he disputed about the body of moses durst not dare not bring against him a railing accusation but said the lord rebuke thee so what is he saying that despise dominion dominion is he talking about the the human dominion no the dominions that god has established in the spiritual realm and there are people who actually they lack authority they don't have authority to cast out devils or whatever but sometimes they they rebuke this and rebuke that and whatever they they want to say but don't look at their character instead we don't see any of the apostles you know accusing the devil we don't see the Lord Jesus Christ accusing the devil or constantly accusing demons and constantly accusing this and that. We don't see that. Verse 11, woe unto them, meaning curses upon them, curses upon them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Cain was lawless and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor, Korah. These are spots in your feasts of clarity, meaning these are the ones who are stumbling blocks stumbling blocks when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear so when the apostle jude is saying they're uh, when they feast with you feeding themselves without fear remember in those days feast was the communion nowadays we call it the communion when the church had started, they used to call it the feast. Just as the Israelites, they had their feasts. They celebrated the feasts in remembrance, in remembrance of what God did for them. So feast of tabernacle, feast of Passover, all these feasts, the, the, the Israelites, they kept these feasts 
God told them to keep these feasts in order to remember what God did for them. Same way, likewise, God has given us Christians one feast. We don't have all those feasts of the Israelites to keep. That's why it is bad to keep any of the feasts of the Israelites. Because we don't have any of those feasts that were under the Old Covenant. We have only one feast. Lord Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me as often as you can. So, what is the feast? Feast was people gathered together and they broke bread and they ate together. They celebrated and they remembered and they remembered what God did for them. That's what God says. Do this feast. Keep this feast so you remember what I did for you. Likewise, Lord Jesus gave us Christians only one feast. Christians do not have more than one feast. We don't celebrate the feast of boots and feast of this and feast of that. No. Lord Jesus gave us one feast. And sadly, because of the uh, Catholic Church, people do not call it a feast anymore. They call it Eucharist, they call it communion, whatever. But actually, it is a feast, one feast, one feast given to Christians to celebrate in remembrance of what Christ has done for us as often as we can. That is why in the days of the apostles when there was a real church, in the real church, they took the Lord's Supper as a feast. So here, the apostle Jude is talking about that feast, not the Jewish feasts, not any other feasts, but this feast, feast of the Supper of the Lord. This is the only feast we got as Christians. So don't let anybody fool you into keeping any other festival, feast, and snare yourself so you won't snare yourself. So they eat the supper of the Lord, meaning they feast with you. They do the feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. You see, the Apostle Paul said, that when we take the feast, when we celebrate the feast of the Supper of the Lord, we have to examine ourselves that if there's any sin in us, there's a habitual sin in us, there's any covetousness, evil speaking, gossip, slander, or any evil deed in us, we must repent of it. We must repent of it because if anybody takes the anybody takes this feast without that fear of the Lord, they take it to their own harm and own demise, own destruction. That's what the Apostle Paul said. So nowadays, people just give out the the feast of the Lord's Supper. And nobody says that, listen, you better get rid of that sin. Otherwise, if you're not willing to get rid of that sin, don't take that communion. It will do harm to you. That's why the Apostle Jude is saying that they take it without fear. This feast must be taken with fear. That if I take it, with sin in my heart and I'm not willing to get rid of the sin and I'm not willing to change from my sin and still take this 
this feast, then the destruction and harm will come. So these false prophets and false teachers were feasting, taking the Lord's Supper without any fear. Where do we see that? They are clouds that are without water. And we talked about it. Water is what? The word of God. The truth of the Lord Jesus Christ that he taught. So there's no truth in them. They're clouds. They're simply just clouds, but they have no water in them. Carried about of winds. They carry, they're carried away, away. They're carried away by every wind. So the Apostle Paul said, don't be carried away by every wind of every doctrine. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, don't be carried away. Don't be carried away by every wind of the doctrines. By every wind meaning the doctrines. But these are carried away by false doctrines, false teachings. Trees whose fruit withereth. So their fruit is withered. They have no good fruit in them. Meaning they have no godly character in them. Without fruit, so not only they don't bear good fruit, and on top of that, now watch this. You must write down. The Apostle Jude said, twice dead. These false teachers and false prophets, they hang out with people, they take communion, they have no truth in them, they do not bear the good fruit, they have false doctrines, and they are twice dead. What does twice dead mean? Make a note of it. Twice dead means first they were dead in sin, then they received the Lord Jesus Christ, baptism of the Holy Ghost, so they were speaking in tongues, they received the Holy Ghost. So they received the new birth from the first time being dead in sin. They received the Lord and they received the new birth. Then they went back to bad character, not keeping the commandments and gone into false doctrines, doctrines of demons and doctrines of men. That's what the winds mean. No longer have the truth in them not bearing the character, so that means they are now dead again. And then nobody can revive them. There is no more life for them. So they died the second time and then they will be cast into the lake of fire. The person who is dead the second time, they are dead for all eternity. That's what the Apostle Jude was saying that these people are dead twice. Be careful. Be careful who you listen to. Lord Jesus said it. Be careful how you hear and what you hear. Twice dead. Plucked up by the roots. Plucked up by the roots. So... Plucked up by the roots, we saw the parable. We saw the parable. We read the parable of uh, the the farmer who planted the tree. Didn't that tree did not bear the fruit for three years? Did not show any sign of fruit for three years. The farmer came and said, "Well, let me pull this out. Let me cut it out because it's taking my ground and it's not producing any fruit." But the keeper said, "Well, let me put some." Uh, manure around and whatever around and see let's wait if it produces any fruit if it if not then you cut it down and do whatever you want to do so these are those trees who receive who were planted by the gardener they were planted but they did not produce the right fruit 
so they were they are already uprooted however do you see the problem do you see the problem even in the early church that look the apostle jude the apostle jude is talking to the believers and rebuking them and giving them discernment that if you hang out with them you will be like them if you hang out with them if you listen to them you will be like them because these people are bad people these are false teachers and false prophets they are already uprooted but look the apostle uh, the apostle jude is telling them all these things look but these people have no discernment that just simply shows that even the early church saints did not have discernment until they were taught discernment that's why the apostle jude the apostle peter john and the apostle paul all of these apostles taught discernment because even in the early church they did not have discernment because discernment is taught Verse 13 raging waves of the sea foaming out of their foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever you see these are false prophets false teachers and for them their judgment is already concluded anybody who follows them anybody who listens to them they will end up where these prophets teachers go i will show it to you in the bible i will show it to you in the bible second peter so remember all these signs raging waves of the sea like they preach the gospel until they baptize the front row with their spit you know, until the whole front row is baptized with their spit. <laughs> they like raging waves of sea, like they are so excited and they're so, you know, they preach and teach with, with all excitement, foaming out their own shame. And they do things that are, you know, loud and obnoxious or whatever. Wandering stars, they go from this to that. And for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 through 3. But false prophets also arose among the people just as there will also be false teachers among you. Who will secretly introduce destructive heresies. You see. watch something here the apostle jude is warning people because they did not have discernment here the apostle paul apostle peter here the apostle peter is giving discernment he's saying that these destructive heresies will not come to you in your face they will not be loud and clear that you can see oh my goodness this is a this is a uh, this is an apostasy and this is a, a destructive heresy let me run away from it no way it will have a little bit of truth here a little bit of truth there then little experiences then a little twistedness not plain truth you see seek Secretly, little leaven here and there that you, when you listen to it, you will not even catch it until it's too late or until you keep going. 
secretly introduce heresies not openly look this is a heresy let me teach you some heresies well this is not how they're going to do it even denying the master who brought them how will they deny how will they deny the master who brought them inner healing it has no power of the cross and power of the blood and power of what Jesus Christ did. Man-made deliverances, all these deliverance pro deliverance programs, uh, heavenly visits or whatever. Uh, and there are so many other things uh, like prosperity gospel and things like that. So these are basically you de denying the master so people who are not keeping the commandments and they're saying well if you quote these scriptures you you will be healed if you um if you sold this much money you will be you will prosper and you can give this much money so your family can be saved and it's all about what you can do in order to receive something taking the master out of it you don't need jesus to be healed you don't need to live a godly and righteous life to prosper no you can just prosper by giving money and quoting scriptures and by believing in scriptures you don't need the master you see there are so many teachings so many teachings oh yeah you can see the angels you don't need the master's permission to see the angels does the master really want you to see the angels or have angelic encounters no just forget about the master you just buy my book and just receive my anointing come to my conference and and just receive whatever you want who's the master Whereas, if we are submitted to the master, we only have what he gives. The Apostle Paul said, I have learned to be content in all circumstances. This is how we ought to be. We learn to be content with, in all circumstances and give thanks to God and rejoice in all circumstances, this is the will of God for you in Jesus Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul said. You see? So there are so many destructive heresies that have come in secretly, destroying people, misleading them on the wide and a, and a broad gate of destruction. That you don't need, if you, if you, if you want your circumstances to get better, well then, you better repent. You better repent of your sins and turn, turn, your, turn away from your sinful ways. Become obedient to the word of God. No, no, no. Also, this how to hear God's voice. There are people who are teaching that anybody can hear the voice of God. According to the Bible, not everybody can hear the voice of God. Lord Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Goats who are also in the church who call Jesus Christ, Lord, Lord, they will not hear the voice of God. They will not hear the voice of the Lord. No matter how much they say, no matter how many books they buy and how many meditations they go into, God will not speak to them. God will not speak to them. So please be careful. Please be careful. If you want to hear the Lord, do what Lord Jesus taught. Do what the Bible teaches. The apostle, the King David said, you will not hear me if I regard iniquity in my heart. And the Bible also says that God only looks at those who are humble and tremble at his word. He resists the proud. He does not listen to the proud, will not answer the proud. So be careful that just by going into some meditation, going into like how to hear the voice of God, um, that everybody can hear the voice of God. No, 
Everybody cannot hear the voice of God. If the Lord Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice, this is where it ends. Who are the sheep? Sheep are those who obey him, who keep his commands. Those are his sheep. No matter how many goats you meet, and they go into the programs. These are called the secret, secretly introduced heresies that everybody can hear the voice of God just by putting some music and meditating or whatever. No. Be careful. Be careful. You want to hear the voice of God? Start becoming obedient to the Lord. Even denying the master who brought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. So, even though you don't see the destruction on them, but we saw from the Apostle Jude that their destruction is already announced and determined. Though they are continuing to live in their glory and whatever they are living in, but their destruction is already decided. So is for these false prophets and false teachers that you see, they might be prospering, they might be whatever, but their destruction is already settled. Bringing swift destruction upon themselves, many will follow their sensuality. Not just few. Millions upon millions upon millions. Millions upon millions will follow their sensuality because they make everything easy. They make everything easy. You don't need to obey the master. You don't need to keep the commandments. This is the sensuality. And because of them, the way of the truth will be maligned. So what I am teaching you is the truth. You want to hear the Lord? Do this. This is the truth. Not just turn the music on, listen to your own thought and meditate and whatever and whatever, you know, that God will speak to you even if you're living in sin. And disobedience. So, truth. They take the truth of the word out of their teachings. They only quote partial scriptures to prove their doctrine, to prove their point. That's what I have seen and that's what you will see that a lot of these teachings, they have partial truth, not the whole truth. They do quote the scriptures, but not every aspect of it. And in their greed, in their greed, they are greedy. They are greedy to grow their ministry. They are greedy for honor. They are greedy for money. They are greedy to, for gain. They are greedy to grow in numbers. More the merrier. They will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. Right? So watch out for all these points that I just gave you from the Apostle Jude and the Apostle uh, and the Apostle Peter. Now let's go to the Apostle Paul. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. But the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, explicit, explicitly meaning strongly without any doubt says that in the latter times which we are in some will fall away from the faith 
So when the apostle Paul is saying some will fall away from faith, write it down, fall away from faith. Equals falling from the commandments of the Lord. Not believing the truth of the word. They will still go to church. They will still give their tithes and offerings. They will still do things, volunteer in the church, but they will not keep the commandments. Because of this reason, I had to go through some scriptures again with you, right? So whoever endures till the end shall be saved, meaning whoever continues to keep the commandments, continues to have faith in the word, in the truth, will be saved. But these people will fall away from the real gospel, from the real truth of the gospel. They will start to believe in heresies, uh, apostasies, and all of those things, and still believe that they are saved. Paying attention to deceitful spirits. Deceitful spirits. Same thing the Apostle John warned about, the Apostle Paul warned about, the Apostle Jude warned about. Deceitful. So what is deceitful? Deceitful is not plain old lie. No. Deceitful meaning only partial truth. Not the whole truth. That's deception. So, for example, you did something and someone asked you, well, what happened? So, just to make things okay, you do tell them what happened, but you only tell them the partial truth, just to keep the peace. That's called deception. Truth means you give the whole truth, whether they get upset or they get mad or they leave you or whatever, it doesn't matter. But if you give them the whole truth, it may not go well with them or with your relationship. So you will give them only the partial truth and that call, that is called deception. Right? Deception does not mean that you lie to somebody. That's called lying. Lying is called lying. Telling the partial truth is deception. For example, Garden of Eden. Satan said, if you eat of it, you shall not surely die. That was partial truth. Did they die? They did not die. Physically, they did not die. So it was partial truth. He gave Eve and Adam partial truth. You shall not surely die. But that was not the whole truth. The whole truth was, yeah, you will physically not die, but you will spiritually die. Your soul will die. Do you see how deception looks like? Verse 2, by means of hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron, men who, verse 3, men who forbid marriages and advocates abstaining from foods and God has created. So pay attention to this also. Uh, so you will not go into this crazy messianic and not so messianic uh, heresies like Judaizers. It's very seducive doctrine, very seductive doctrine. Um, it caught a hold of the Apostle Peter and Barnabas and 15 of them. It can ca catch a hold of just about anybody. So just be careful about that too.
the hypocrites they pretend to be somebody on the pulpit and behind their behind the pulpit they're living a double life second timothy chapter 4 verse 3 and 4 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine that people will not even tolerate people will not have patience to listen they would rather listen to somebody who says, oh, anybody can be Catherine Kuhlman. Anybody can be the, uh, uh, A. A. Allen. Anybody can be Lester Summerall. Anybody can be uh, Pastor Benny. Um, and I saw that. I saw that. There was a short video which I watched and uh, because it said prophecy about America, whatever. I th that's what I, so I thought, yeah, let me listen to what they're saying. But because I have sound judgment, I was able to listen and I, wa I was so grieved in my spirit because this pastor is famous. This pastor is famous. And I was so grieved in my spirit. He was saying, anybody... All of you can be Catherine Kuhn. All of you can be Pastor Benny. All of you can be this and that. And signs, wonders, and miracles, and this and that. Um, and people were cheering him up and, you know, applauding for him. Sensuality. What was happening in that? Arousing, their, tickling their ears. Whereas, I would give the truth. You want Miss Catherine's anointing? She paid a cost, you can pay too. Pay the cost and you can have it. You want Pastor Benny's anointing, Pastor A.A. A. Allen's, or any, um, or Lester Summerall's? You want these anointings? You want to move in that power and authority? Um, well, pay the cost. It will cost you. It will cost you that once you start to walk in it, you'll be like, oh man, I wish I never had it. Wish I never had it. Like Miss Catherine said, like somebody said, oh, isn't it awesome that you have a call of God on your life? And she said, yeah, it is so awesome that sometimes I wish I didn't have it. Uh, but at the same time, once you start, once you go far enough, you can't go back. Going back meaning dying. That's why Lord Jesus said, anybody who builds a house or sends a soldier to the battle counts the cost. Nobody, nobody talks about counting the cost. You can have this, you can have that. These are called heresies, apostasies, secretly destructive heresies. There is a cost. There is a cross. There is a price to pay. There is a certain lifestyle you must live if you don't want the anointing to become your enemy. Do you realize that if a person has the anointing, they, they are anointed by God. And then they start to fall in sin. They start to do bad things or, or do not uh, submit to the Lord. The anointing itself will become their worst enemy and destroy them. Jack Coe died in his 30s. He was anointed, did not submit to the word of God, did not follow the rules did not pay the cost, did not want to pay the cost. Anointing took him out. You see, this is the fearful part that is not taught. That's why I was so grieved in my spirit that this man being so famous is teaching things that are not good. Only giving the partial truth, not giving the whole truth. If he gave the whole truth, nobody will like him. Nobody will clap. I'm telling you.
they will not endure sound doctrine but wanting to have the, their ears tickled they will accumulate they will heap up for themselves teacher who will teach them what they want to hear according to their own flesh their own desires so they will they will support financially people christians will support the pastors the apostles the prophets the evangelists and teachers support them financially and raise them up meaning heap for themselves the teachers who tell them what they want to hear how do you accumulate teachers for yourself by supporting them and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths meaning experiences that they will pay more attention to the experiences and the myths and this and that than to the truth so write down these false teachers lack the truth the full truth not the the truth itself but they lack the whole truth the apostle jude said that apostle peter and the apostle paul is saying that they do not have the truth in them meaning they do quote scriptures all of these these false teachers and false prophets if they don't quote the scriptures do you think people will go to them and people will support them not at all they do quote the scriptures they do tell people but they tell half the truth jeremiah chapter 6 verse thir verse 13 jeremiah chapter 6 verse 13 for from the least of them even to the greatest of them everyone is greedy for gain even though you may not see the, the they're greedy but you watch what they are looking for are they looking to serve you or they're looking to receive something from from you or are they building you up so you can be raised up in your own call or you are there to build them up so they can be built up in their in their ministry and here god is saying from the least to the greatest of them everyone is greedy for the for gain and from the prophet even to the priest everyone deals falsely false teachers false prophets jeremiah chapter 5 verse 31 the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests rule on their own authority meaning rule on their own authority meaning god never appointed them god never appointed them and my people love it so people love the false teachers and false prophets people love to listen to what tickles ears reverend billy graham never diluted the gospel he never diluted the gospel he wasn't there to cheer the crowds that's why when reverend billy graham is preaching the gospel you're not gonna hear a whole lot of applause applause not a whole lot of applause people were sitting dumbfounded because he was a true prophet that's why when reverend billy graham preached the gospel pin drop silence
And yes, you know, he would balance it out with the love of God and the fear of God. And um, it was a very sobering experience in his meetings. Um, Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Woe to you, meaning curses be upon you, when all the people speak well of you. All the people, meaning when everybody likes you, that's where there's a problem. If everybody likes you, then you may have to question the truth in you. As far as I'm concerned, everybody doesn't like me. That's why I get some hate messages. There are people who get so demonically stirred up that they send me such horrible messages. They do. Because it hits them in their sin and in their heresies, in their apostasies. But then there are some who do appreciate who do repent, who do like me. But, you know, look, people liked the Lord Jesus Christ also. Not everybody hated him. Not everybody hated all the apostles. In fact, the Bible says, the book of Acts says, that they held him, they held the apostles in a very high esteem. In a high esteem. So, not that everybody should hate you, but, you should not expect everybody to like you. The ratio of people liking you or people hating you must balance it out. If everybody likes what you say and how you live your life, then there's a trouble, there's a problem. Woe to you when all the people speak well of you for their fathers used to treat the false prophets the same way. You see, when somebody has a huge fan club and everybody says good things about them, <laughs> there's a problem. There's a problem there. You know what? Um, let's close it here. So we can do it in three sessions because this is a very deep, uh, deep matter. Our salvation depends on it. Our life depends on it. So we're, we're not going to rush through this. We're going to go into real good, solid meat and potatoes. So we seriously can test the spirits test the deceit uh partial truth can test the the fruit and all of those things so we're not going to rush through this we will go through this in bits enough to digest okay so let's close it here uh let's close it here so do you guys want to unmute yourself